Bill Clinton, along with high-profile lawyers and elites such as Donald Trump, billionaire Jeffrey Epstein, who was a close friend of state presidents, was arrested. Epstein, who has long been intriguing the public with parties with elites from all over the world on his private island, where no one knew anything about, is now behind bars. On July 6, 2019, allegations emerged that Jeffrey, who hosted hundreds of famous people from around the world, including state presidents on his island, secretly recorded pedophile parties and blackmailed these individuals. Jeffrey was sentenced to prison due to these charges and sent to the Metropolitan Correctional Center. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes. What was the crime of which you were convicted? It, two uh, counts, one soliciting prostitution and procuring a minor for prostitution. This was a significant arrest because if Epstein were to be tried, many people who were present on Epstein Island, where pedophilia and human trafficking crimes were committed, would be involved. Allegedly, there was a list of over 200 names, including famous physicist Stephen Hawking, former US President Bill Clinton, renowned illusionist David Copperfield, actor Kevin Spacey, who had committed similar deviant crimes, and the truth would shake the entire America, and even the world. Therefore, Jeffrey Epstein was placed in a special cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center. He was put into a cell with another prisoner, monitored by cameras every moment and checked by guards every half hour. However, something happened that night. We are here with breaking news. According to the latest information we have received, diabolic financier Jeffrey Epstein was found dead in his cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center, where he was transferred to serve his sentence for crimes such as human trafficking and pedophilia. On July 10, 2019, Epstein's cellmate was transferred to another cell. Since no other prisoner was brought in, Epstein was left alone in his cell that day. That night, the cameras in the cell malfunctioned. The guards who were supposed to watch the cameras and check on him every half hour fell asleep in the evening. At 6.30 p.m., Jeffrey Epstein was found dead in his cell, having hanged himself. With Epstein's death, all the truths he knew, including all the perversions that occurred on his island and in his mansion in New York, vanished. Ten days after Epstein's death, the judge presiding over the case dropped all the trafficking and pedophilia charges against Epstein due to his death and closed the case. The case was kept secret from the public for years. Those who spoke about the incident were silenced. The names who went to the island and what happened on the island were considered conspiracy theories for years. However, on January 3, 2024, by the decision of U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska, Jeffrey Epstein's case file and all documents about him were made public. The names who went to the island, the thousands of children abducted to the island, and all the events that took place on the island were disclosed to the public. So, how did it all begin? How did Jeffrey Epstein, a child of a working-class family in Brooklyn, become a billionaire who knew all the world elites? What happened on that island for years? Who were the names who went to the island? What led to the end of Jeffrey Epstein, who had such close relationships with statesmen? Today, in this documentary, you will learn the answers to all these questions. It all started with a lie. Jeffrey Epstein was born into a Jewish family in 1953. His mother, Pauline, worked as a part-time school aide, and his father, Seymour Epstein, was a land worker and gardener. Neighbors who knew Jeffrey's childhood described him as very normal, but exceptionally intelligent. Jeffrey Epstein graduated from Mark Twain Middle School in 1967. He then enrolled in Lafayette High School, where he excelled in mathematics and physics compared to his peers. He became a successful member of the Advanced Mathematics Club and graduated from high school two years early. However, his academic success did not last long. Despite attending two different universities for mathematics studies after high school, Epstein entered the workforce without completing either university. Of course, he did so by telling lies. In 1974, the prestigious Dalton School, often frequented by elites, urgently needed a mathematics and physics teacher. Epstein, who was proficient in both subjects, applied for the job by lying on his resume. Due to the school's urgent need for a teacher and Epstein's competence in these subjects, he was hired. Actually, this is how everything began. Epstein entered the world of the elite during his time as a teacher at this school. 
because almost all of the students who came to the school had parents who were bank owners or high-ranking people in New York. Epstein's first pedophilic tendencies also began here. At that time, he was surrounded by female students that he taught all the time. Jeffrey was often described as flirtatiously talking to these students and easily getting high grades. When Jeffrey was investigated years later, he was also asked about his years as a teacher. When asked if he had ever had a sexual relationship with any of his students, he answered no. His years as a teacher did not last long. In his second year of teaching, he was fired for poor performance. But Jeffrey had made enough connections in those two years. During his years as a teacher at Dalton School, he met Alan Greenberg, the CEO of Bear Stearns, the famous investment bank, who had sent his children to the school. Recognizing this young teacher's success in mathematics, Greenberg hired him as an assistant. Greenberg recognized the desire to become rich in Epstein's eyes early on. Thanks to this ambition, Epstein quickly rose in the investment bank where he started working. He dealt with high net worth and genuinely elite clients, providing them with investment advice and tax reduction strategies that any assistant couldn't offer. Within four years at Bear Stearns, Jeffrey Epstein became a limited partner in the bank. However, his ambition and intelligence were very dark. All the advice he gave and the strategies he proposed violated Federal Reserve regulations. When this came to light, he was asked to leave his position at the bank, and he stepped down from his partnership position there. Although he no longer worked there, he still communicated with his clients from there. He now provided financial advisory services exclusively to them, making money for people from all over New York and playing with millions. He continued to be involved in financial advisory work from 1981 to 1988. During this period, he and Stephen Hoffenberg established one of the biggest fraudulent schemes in American history, causing investors to lose over $450 million. But the event that kickstarted his fortune, large enough to buy an island, occurred in 1986. Having spent his entire career mingling with millionaires and even billionaires from his first day in business, Jeffrey Epstein met Leslie Wexner, the CEO of Victoria's Secret, through his insurance manager friend Robert Meister. With his financial skills, he quickly impressed Wexner. Within a year, Epstein had solved all of Wexner's financial problems and successfully managed his money. He became Wexner's right-hand man. This closeness to Wexner brought him a great opportunity. In 1988, Epstein founded his financial management firm, Jeffrey Epstein & Company. He cited his consultancy to Victoria's Secret CEO as the reason for starting the company, stating that it was to manage the assets of clients with a net worth of over $1 billion. Three years later, impressed by Epstein's success and dedication, Leslie Wexner granted him full power of attorney for all his affairs by signing a power of attorney. This power of attorney gave Epstein the authority to do everything Wexner could do from hiring people to signing checks to buying property. In short, anything Wexner could do. In addition, he received millions of dollars in payment each month for managing financial affairs. And it is precisely at this point that the darkness began. Thanks to the power of attorney signed by Leslie Wexner, Epstein effectively became a billionaire. The money wasn't his, but through the power of attorney, it was as good as his. With the power in his hands, Epstein felt invincible. After the power of attorney, Epstein began to make a splash in the world of elites, buying luxury residences. He purchased a mansion in New York, a residence in Florida, seven apartments in Paris, a 30 square kilometers farm in New Mexico, and the infamous island everyone knows about. He acquired the Little St. James Island in the United States Virgin Islands during this period thanks to the financial power provided by the power of attorney. Immediately afterward, in the year 2000, Epstein established his foundation. By donating millions of dollars to research programs at various universities, he portrayed himself as a philanthropic figure. It wasn't his money, but he spent it as if it were. The power of attorney not only provided him with financial power, but also gave him a semblance of authority and influence. He started to show up in places where only people of status were admitted, where you couldn't get in even if you had money. He often attended art shows, Victoria's Secret fashion shows, concerts and parties. In fact, his first evil work started with these fashion shows. Epstein, who had all the rights related to Victoria's Secret, thanks to a power of attorney, 
deceived girls who wanted to become models or were models with false dreams and invited them to his house in New York, where he abused them. He would then take and store the photos for blackmail. Epstein, who occasionally appeared in the media with headlines such as Pervert Billionaire Seen with Models or Epstein's Mansion is the Resting Place of Victoria's Secret Models, was uncomfortable with this situation, but he didn't care much because in his world, he was a man making millions of dollars a month. As time progressed, he increased the extent of the abuse. Epstein, who initially invited models of legal age to his mansion, was now inviting 15, 16, and even 14-year-old girls to his mansion through his assistance or directly with different promises. He was practicing the same abuses on them, but everything was just beginning. In 1991, he recognized his accomplice, his best friend, his lover Ghislaine Maxwell. Epstein and Ghislaine, who had just lost her father, a media mogul, and had very powerful connections, had met at a party in New York and hit it off. For Epstein, Ghislaine was a key to the government. In a short time, their relationship turned into a love affair and the two began to appear everywhere together. In this way, Epstein met heads of state, royalty, and other rich people. He was establishing intimacy with these important people and adding these names to his contacts. Moreover, Ghislaine Maxwell was not just a means for Epstein to connect with the elite. Thanks to Ghislaine, he could now expand his pedophilia network without being seen directly. Instead of communicating directly with the girls he would deceive, he would reach them through Ghislaine and do the same thing when they came to the mansion. These girls, usually brought from massage parlors at Epstein's special request, were lured by the promise that they would give Epstein a massage at his mansion. When they arrived at the mansion, they would be abused after the massage and then paid between $300 and $400 and sent home. When Epstein sent the girls away, he told them they could come back anytime they wanted. When the girls came back and gained enough trust with Epstein, they traveled to different destinations on Epstein's plane. Epstein's island was one of them, but it didn't end there. Epstein would take the girls who trusted him enough to the big names he had met and everything in secret through the cameras. But the collapse began in 2005. In March 2005, a woman walked into the Palm Beach Police Department in Florida. She said that her 14-year-old stepdaughter had been taken by an adult woman to a mansion in New York City, where she was abused for money. The mansion allegedly belonged to billionaire Jeffrey Epstein. After the allegation, Palm Beach police first called Epstein's mansion and started investigating the incident. Then the FBI joined the investigation. In this secret 13-month investigation, 34 abused children were interviewed. Epstein's mansion was examined. Many lawsuits were being filed against the perverted billionaire. As the investigation progressed, many details about the abuse were revealed. According to what was learned, some of the girls were recruited from the Palm Beach area, while others were recruited from Brazil, South American countries, and former Soviet countries, and brought by Epstein's Lolita Express airplane. They were exploited not only by Epstein, but also by former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, Bill Clinton, British Royal Prince Andrew, and others. During their investigation, police found two hidden pinhole cameras at the Palm residence. There was also an extensive surveillance system installed at his New York mansion. These cameras, which could be viewed in the media room through a secret door, continuously recorded every part of the house. According to the Justice Department, hundreds of compact discs with names written on them were found in the safe in Epstein's mansion. These names were important names, but this information was never made public and kept secret until 2018. In 2007, while the trial was going on, Epstein started building on the infamous island he had bought in 1991 to secure himself. It was supposed to be secluded, but he also had to secure himself. He had to be able to threaten important people such as US President Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew, a member of the British royal family, if his activities were exposed. And if he was in a difficult situation, he could get out of it easily thanks to these threats. So he equipped the island with hidden cameras. He made the island a paradise. By June 30th, 2008, the investigation had gathered enough evidence against Epstein. Epstein's sex and abuse of girls under 18, he was sentenced to 18 months in prison for his crime. But he had made so many connections that there was never a normal sentencing process. While abuse offenders are usually sent to state prisons in the US, Epstein was placed in a special wing of the Palm Beach County Stokade. 
he was allowed out six days a week to work from prison. His cell door was left open. Some of the women he abused were allowed to visit him. He was even visited 90 times by his assistant and possible sex slave Nadia Martinkova under two different names. The imprisonment did not last long. He was released to be detained under house arrest until August 2010. During this period to visit his island, which he started to build several times. From this point, the infamous Epstein Island process has begun. Epstein, his sentence register as a level 3 sex offender with a high risk of recidivism after it ends under the jail. Normally such offenders have to sign a petition every 90 days, but Epstein never showed up for the signing. He started spending most of his time on the island. He often entertained guests on the island, but once his name had been smeared in the media for pedophilia, people didn't want to be around him anymore. Even the CEO of Victoria's Secret, Wexner, he was not in touch. Epstein established the Epstein Foundation in the 2000s to repair his image, through which he continued to donate to universities. In fact, I knew it was nothing. He had donated to universities in his early years, but he did it more often. He enlisted the help of experts. He threw parties where he hosted scientists and other important people. He hosted many people on his island for different reasons, each of whom played an important role at the state level. Governed countries, investigators, FBI agents, famous scientists, and famous actors. Many of you might expect to hear allegations of child abuse against Stephen Hawking in this video, but that's not true. Some YouTubers have claimed without any research that Stephen Hawking watched children, but this is false. It has been confirmed that the allegation was made up by a Twitter page. In the 950-page records published by the U.S. Department of Justice, Hawking's name is mentioned only once in an unrelated context. This was exactly Epstein's intention, to normalize his actions by associating himself with many prominent figures. However, it all came to an end with an interview he gave to the New York Times in 2018. Epstein, who had faced more than 15 lawsuits since the first case in 2005, had become a public target. Everyone was talking about him and wondering what was happening on his island. However, he had made employees sign contracts prohibiting them from discussing the island. Epstein did not admit the police who came for control into his island, using legal reasons as an excuse. In 2018, during an interview with a New York Times reporter about his legal processes, Epstein said, I know very big secrets of powerful people, from their sexual inclinations to drug use. I am not the only guilty or bad one. Then, the Department of Justice talked about the disks obtained during the raids in 2005. This brought Epstein's end. On July 6, 2019, Epstein, who faced more than 15 lawsuits, was arrested at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey on charges of sex trafficking. This time, instead of a private prison, he was imprisoned at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York, where prisoners like El Chapo Guzman and Paul Manafort were held. As Epstein was being taken to jail, numerous FBI agents raided all his properties. They collected all the compact discs, photos, videos, and seized all the money they found. Epstein was taken to a jail cell. Everyone around him, including his lawyers, was requesting bail for him, reaching up to $600 million. However, all requests were denied. Epstein was being held inside by someone. The cell where he was held was very special. It was checked by guards every 30 minutes, monitored by cameras in real time, and he stayed with another inmate to prevent him from harming himself. However, on August 10, 2019, the cameras that were monitoring him in real time malfunctioned. The inmate who was with him was transferred to another cell, the guards who were supposed to monitor him fell asleep. Epstein was found dead in his cell, hanging. An autopsy revealed multiple fractures in his neck and hyoid bone. Forensic pathologist Cyril Wecht stated that hanging forward would not cause fractures in the cervical bones. He said that such fractures are more common in murder victims by drowning. However, New York's chief medical examiner, Barbara Sampson, conducted a four-hour autopsy on Epstein's body on August 11 and closed the case as a suicide. Epstein was silenced by someone with all the truths he knew and sent into eternity. All these events came back to the agenda on January 4, 2024, when a prosecutor in New York opened the case to the public.